Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us all with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. We thank you by divine power you have given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness. We thank you, O oh Lord, to be among the people that partner with you to make life a better place to live. We thank you for the privilege of today, the life, the health, the vitality, the soundness of mind, and peace in and around us that has given us the grace to gather this life Father, we return our glory to you. As we have come, let your peace be all over us. For everyone connected to us, wherever they are, let your peace be with them for Let the word of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable, O oh Lord, unto you. For you are our Lord, our strength, and our redeemer. Glory be to your name, Father. Let everything we are going to do today add your blessing to lives. Let lives be transformed. Let us be promoted. And let every one of us continue to enjoy your presence. Amen. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> Welcome again for this get together, for reunion. And um, what we are going to do for us, I think it's going to be a little bit on the right or on the left, just a short in introduction. Okay, sir. So I know that um, most of us know ourselves. I said most because I can't vouch for everybody, <laughs> but I know we know ourselves. So, so um, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Tawaliat Salami. I'm the founder of Movie Shop with the Um which is a multi platform uh, fresh food free delivery company. It's targeted at working with we will be about uh, 14 in October. But originally, the, the idea came up with the of home. That was when I joined the first budget in order to get um, motivation from practitioners, not just motivational speakers, to uh, push me to, to start. Um, doubt and fear were the two major things that made me join. <laughs> that told me and him were the two people that gave me the words to go ahead with my dream because it was novel at the time.
free. So two people coming online, everyone wants to do it free. And as a result, it's more like overcrowded. And so in order to meet that in court, we have to find a way to separate the charts. And that is we pay that time. And so what we do now is for those a lot of companies have videos and they don't know what to do with them. So what we do is to help them push it out there and help them to get it into the hands of people because the new TV, the new radio, the new newspaper, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. And if you are not there right now, obviously the next disruption can shift the business side. So that's the main thing right now. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be telling her the next big thing. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good afternoon. My name is Toye. Toye, take it to it. I'm always part of 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 it. Toye, take it to it. Toye, take it to it. Toye, so I introduced myself as okay. like my person because I attended a military secondary school and nobody calls me a person. So, um, now I am a CEO of Instant Web Technologies Limited. And um, that company will provide forex, uh, online forex broadcast services to forex traders. So, um, we are presently working with um, Instant Forex, a global broker, and another broker, which will very soon. Then I'm also uh, director for West Africa for Citizens International, which is a, and which helps I network individuals. So I'm responsible for West Africa I network individuals to help them to obtain second citizenship. Okay, so. <laughs> We tell them about their new discovery <laughs> island. <laughs> so let's <laughs> hear yeah, the better story about it. Yeah, so uh, um, I think people would normally think Canada first. Yeah. But we are um, we are more uh, tuned to citizenship that people, wealthy people can obtain in record time, three months to five months. So uh, we have we have focused mainly on the Caribbean. The Caribbean islands. Yeah. Very wonderful places. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. 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 <laughs> Paradise. And of course, for obvious reasons, why I need to work for business, business optimization, uh, ability to travel easily, this afternoon. We're talking more than 15 countries. Tax shelters too. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. That's why I said that the wealth and my asset preservation and tax shelter like that. But mm -hmm. I mean, there is a way you could do it legally. Mm -hmm. Legally, citizenship from, from those companies to optimize and uh, protect, preserve wealth. Yeah. And then, yeah. so, yeah. I'm sure by the time we are done, I've been talking to <laughs> all of us. <laughs> <laughs>
that's got everywhere. That's the only Things were not going as or looking good as I thought they would. So I started to search for alternative way of uh, creating wealth, and I discovered it. And I found that um, there's another way of make, of creating wealth that has something to do with running running around. Um, and it's a Bible God's way of making for creating wealth. And I like I like watching doctors every time and his wife. They don't. The offices to look for contracts. They sit in their offices and money comes to them. I'm interested. They didn't know I was studying them. <laughs> so, and I've also found out that the source is the Bible. So, I bought all the translation of the Bible and I, I found a very interesting personality in the Bible uh, called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When he needed money to feed, uh, to pay tax, he didn't go to the bank. He just told he just told Peter to go to the fish and cash one. I said, ah, this is an ATM, this is an automatic uh, I'm interested. So I started study uh studying the first ATM in the So when I look at everything, I find that the the, the wealth that does not have sorrow to it is in the Bible. And it's a very simplified approach. What does it mean? He said 
don't start to create wealth, don't start to make money, or so, don't start to teach people to make. In other words, I mean, what you should do is um, build yourself personally, develop all the four intelligences, spiritual intelligence, emotional intelligence, physical intelligence, and then when you have discovered who you are, you have taken control of your mind, and then multiply yourself in other people. And forever you are blessed. You don't need to talk, leave anything. For instance, we are all here because Dr. Jerry has, has replicated himself in us. He's, he's, he's forever worthy. He doesn't need to have anything in his bank accounts. I'm interested in that. And it's a tough way, but if you go that way, it's actually the best. And I want to tell you, God's way of, of creating wealth is the best. So what I'm doing now is that I am building myself up. I'm not running a task getter. I'm reading books, meeting people, investing in myself, and I'm beginning to see results. Just like he has done to us. I've also gathered people together to also let them know what I know. And the, the impact is unbelievable. So in other words, in a few years' time, you may not see me going to banks. I just press some button and then <laughs> <laughs> just like Jesus Christ. Oh, you want to eat? <laughs> so I, I want to make myself uh, the automated ATM. That's not true. I am the stock market. I am the CBN, Central Bank of Nigeria. I am, I, so I don't need to invest in anything. Because I look at the Bible, I don't see where they said Jesus had 20 million in one bank account. No. Yet, the head is the Lord and the fullness thereof. I'm interested in that way. And it's interesting. I'm going to ask all of you to join me soon. Uh, so that you don't need to do anything. Thank you very much. And I want to say personally that I've been blessed by, by these wonderful individuals. Uh, and I'm very happy that God was able to rescue them for our sake. Uh, I knew he was sick. Uh, it was very bad because when I, s I was in Atlanta, I mean uh, Boston when he was in Atlanta the other time, and I called and the voice didn't sound very okay. But here is he, they, they are. So we have to give glory to God for saving them for our sake. We are blessed uh, for being a blessing to us, and we thank you very much for also yielding yourself to be a channel of blessing to everybody. God bless you. Well, you know, I can still remember the first time I came here. This was um, 2000, 1999, 2000. I'm coming to my name. <laughs> uh, 2000. It was at the other office when I walked into his office with what looked more like a pamphlet, then known as the Achievers Manual. And what I found was a man who instantly became a father. Mm -hmm. Looked at it and said, you know what you're going to do? I never met him. I just said, Sir, can I see you? And said, I'm going to take the first page of this small manual. It's a shame I didn't come with copies here for, for that purpose. And instantly, Success Digest began to advertise in a publication that should be seeking to advertise in Success Digest. Maybe it was something I said, or maybe the way I looked. But I think that's an amazing thing about uh, Uncle Sonny. I call him the Nigerian original. That's my nickname for him. So any day, any time, he, he embodies that. Yes, let me say my name. My name is Ubong Isian. Uh, uh, some of you have heard the appellation Mr. Motivator uh, back in the day, and of course, uh, the Achievers Manual. So I started publishing because I read Success Digest. That's the truth. In my final year in the university, Success Digest would go to those who could buy it and read. And so when I came out, that was the footsteps I followed. So I would say I'm also a journalist. I'm a journalist too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a journalist too. I think that's what gave me the foothold into motivational speaking because I was publishing and I had that fantastic opportunity. But uh, I have since moved, I have since significantly reduced my footprint in the motivational speaking arena. Uh, even though I still do a, a lot of it for corporate entities mm. because the track record is there, but it's really more functional work to help organizations. But not really the noisy, that you, you mature, you grow after a while. So. But beyond that is the fact that I have sort of narrowed, I've become a bit lazy. I've become quite lazy. Uh, quite, quite lazy uh, in many ways. <laughs> which is a good thing. <laughs> which is what has led, so I spend most of my time now 
with the School of Eloquence, which uh, we founded in 2006 with the support of my wife, because all I have to do is just uh, borrow from the Sonia Basel Jack Basel model, where you live here and you work here. So in a way, we've created this sort of campus environment where a resident, I live behind, I just stroll into the office, I meet some traffic, that traffic happens to be my wife <laughs> on my way to work. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, so as, as the dean of the school, we, we teach, the school just teaches public speaking. We're, we're the Google of public speaking. We teach public speaking, we coach public speaking. So you will have a lot of high profile people who come, who just park their cars, there's a quiet place, and we work with them. Some of them are directors. I think we've worked with the wives of one or two governors, just high profile people, and then corporate entities. So the goal is for us to stay as focused as possible within that and hopefully become the next LBS. Uh, as far as that niche is concerned, just that's really what I'm doing most of the time at the moment, just working as a, a teacher in the field of public speaking. Thank you very much. If you allow me this microphone, I may never yeah, hand it over. Know, so. know, <laughs> it's in the blood. Be lazy. Mm. Mm. One more thing, though. Mm. Uh, I am also the only certified speaking professional in the whole of West Africa yeah, from the Global <laughs> Speakers Federation. Uh, I, so it's it's one of the highest earned designation in the field. And that has shaped my approach to speaking, which is why I've toned down on the motivational speaking the way we used to know it, because the goal is to be much more professional about it. So thank you for, for him. I would have probably answered. Mm. answered. Mm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is BC Adewale. I'm a family consultant a married counselor and uh, I got to know uh, Pastor <laughs> Ojegwazi several years ago in a very remarkable way. I, used to, I, was in, I was a student then. A friend of mine would buy a magazine and bring it to my and just drop a copy for me. After some time I said, can I be getting this magazine every month? He said yes. He will never read it, but he will drop it on my table. And I kept on <laughs> reading it. <laughs> Every month I will demand. Later I now said, I just discovered that I have that ability to, to write. But how to publish it, how to bring it out. And I wrote him a letter. I wrote the editor, I mean the publisher, a letter that I would like to see him. That can I see him? Can he make? He said I should come. And I was so surprised the day I got the the reply in the mail. It was as if it came from heaven. So I came to me to him and I he sat me down. The first thing he asked me was, are you really ready to do this work for yourself? Are you ready to be, are you, uh, uh, there's another way he said, he said, are you really ready to impart your word? I said, yes, I'm ready. He said, then put that, those things, those ideas, put them on the, on paper. Then I began to write. Toward the end of my, of my uh, days in school, the final year, I heard that word from God that you will never be an accountant because I was not in accounting. That I am, uh, you are going to balance family life. It was so dramatic. I ran down to him, said, Yes, that's okay. Whatever God asks you to do. I need to do as a I have three books. And I said I have three books. He said something in Yoruba. He said, write more. A time is coming. But that was the first time I heard Yoruba from his mouth. He said, Say, write more. That is, the time is coming, you won't be able to write again. That was exactly 21 years ago. As at this morning, I have 96 books wow. on family life. Anytime I feel I've written too much, I will remember again <laughs> that he said, write more. The word is waiting for you. Of course, when he started, for the first three years, I sold 500 copies. So that was depressing. So I came down to him and said, keep on writing. 
Say by the time you write five, six, seven, eight, it will get to a state. People will see you as a professional in that regard. And that's exactly what happened. You no, know, by the time you mention one or two or three people in Nigeria today, and even in Africa today, about family life, they may mention our name. And it has been like that. So uh, in the in the last few years we moved into online publishing where the publisher of Daily Family NG. Then uh, we are on the verge of getting a radio license. We call it family radio. That we're broadcasting only something about family, everything, teaching families. We've gotten to the final stage now. So we are trusting God that Buhari will sign the the document <laughs> and we'll be able to to kickstart the thing immediately. About a few months ago, we started online training institute. We call it polinstitute.com, whereby you don't need to be, we, because we have a marriage school, and we discovered that people are becoming more lazier to come to the class. So we now turn, we face four areas, in the area of faith, in the area of fitness, that's health, in the area of uh, family, then the area of finance. So in these four areas, you can easily go online and get yourself trained and award yourself certificate after taking the exam, all online. We just rolled it out last month. Then the next few, in, I think before December, we'll be coming out with what we call familiarbooks.com, which will be purely audio and ebook uh, outfit, so that all authors, they can come there, they put their book there, we market it for them, we pay them. In fact, that's one we are building the app now. By this month, they will, by next month, they will deliver it. We do the testing, and by December, we are going to, we call it familiarbooks.com. We discovered that a lot of authors, a lot of people, they have ideas on their head. They don't know how to market books. And we discovered that our people are becoming lazier to read physical books like this. So we discovered that they are using their phone more, their iPad, their laptop. So we decided to quickly go and meet them there, mm -hmm. wherever. They are so familiar books will be coming out in the next uh, so that's why I, mean, I think before we go we have some of us that we need to talk to to know how to collaborate together so once again i appreciate you daddy and mommy and for mommy for not turning our daddy back to life by the grace of god we appreciate you we have it's god but god use somebody we appreciate you so much i was uh, fully aware of everything that happened even when they were abroad and everything and it was our prayer that God will do everything to the glory of God. They are back on their feet and it will never go back in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, sir. I've been listening to all these great men and the great woman here. Uh, I don't know. Now having to say something, I really don't know where. Okay, let me start with my name. <laughs> that will help. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Ayo Odusholu. Um, legend has, has it that um, the pregnancy was actually a girl that was to be born. And then somewhere along the line, I showed up. <laughs> so I was called Ayo because there was surprise. <laughs> as well as the light and i take it as an indication of where i'm going in life to bring joy a self-fulfilling prophecy the name every few years i undergo some kind of metamorphosis at the beginning um, was a trainer people through the airwaves you want to conquer a land, you take charge of their, of the airwaves. You change their music, you change their reading patterns. You change their I'll probably close with this as well. In the last few years, I've seen Nigeria change beyond recognition, both for good and for bad. So I say to myself, I need to do something about this. <coughs> so my most recent metamorphosis, or is it in is what I'll talk about. But about me, TV, um, I had the first program on TV talking about what the internet is all about in layman's terms. Comfortably speaking to you as though it was just one person I was talking to. I was on NTA, uh, 
network. I was on Lagos Television. I had radio stints as well. Uh, I evolved into a trainer, a writer. I contributed with the kind permission <laughs> of Daddy and Mommy here, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ojagbase, who gave me the opportunity to contribute my ideas. Uh, I remember saying to him then, please, sir, can I have some books in your library? I still looked around today when I came in. <laughs> and he said, you know enough. Go and write what you know. <laughs> Those authors wrote what they knew. So you two, go. you already know enough. Go and write. I took it up as a challenge. The very first time you published my article, sir, ah, everybody in our generation heard about it. I made sure I bought enough copies to give to everyone, including my dad, who always gave me 40% in my very best essay. I said, Daddy, published, published. He said, bring it. The next day, he ma I still have it at home. He massacred the entire thing. You, you didn't write this properly. You didn't do it. Ah, I said, in a published work. <laughs> You understand? So I took that up no to indicate, professor. <laughs> you know, to indicate, I, I felt that I had something to say. All right. What medium would give me the largest reach? As at that time, for me, it was TV, radio. I won't bore you with the stories of what one had to go through to make that happen. It was not funny. As some of my guys on this table will always, we also say, um, I've been involved in marketing, by the way, also, I'm a clergyman, um, MDC or post-school academy, Web Freak. Um, that one, I've had that, like, God knows how many years now. I consult for um, companies that need somebody to help with the superstructure of their business, somebody to come in, a troubleshooter, a, um, not a linear thinker, somebody who can come in and say, why is this this way? And can we look at other ways to do it? All right. I do group trainings as well. Uh, like my Ogao Bong said, uh, I try to uh, be a bit more uh, laid back. I won't use the word lazy because your own lazy is making money. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be that lazy as well. <laughs> All right. Um, but as, as I said at the beginning, I'm concerned about what this nation will be in the next 10, 20 years. And so one can make all the money you know, have influence, have power, but it doesn't make any difference if you don't leave a legacy behind. And personally, I worry about the future of Nigeria and Nigerians. Every time you tune in, you say to yourself, what can we do differently? So I say to myself, in this latest version of me, I would like to influence those who influence things. I would like to let them see that there's a different way and a better way to get things done. It's not rocket science. Even rocket science now, they have professors in rocket science. <laughs> so if human beings have defeated rocket science, fixing our nation is not beyond us. But we need thinkers. We need people who are passionate. We need people who have solutions. And I always say to myself, give me the opportunity to speak to those who are in a place to make a difference. But they are not doing so. Perhaps because there's no political will or perhaps because there's no thinking in that direction, all right? So we must also be able to prefer solutions beyond just empowering our people. It's time to change our nation so that when we are finally signing off, or is it signing out, when we are going to log out and, and log in somewhere else, will people be able to say concerning us that we left a big footprint that made a difference in Nigeria? Thank you, everyone. I was silently hoping that uh, he would not tell you why I really invited him here. <laughs> uh, Ayo Dushodo was uh, my first teacher. Um, when I came back with um, How to Sell on the Internet, and I read that book, I saw everything that was going to happen uh, years to come and I have no clue how to go about using the computer practically and he does so 
The first 90 days, there was a three-month period that I locked myself in. I mean, by lock myself in, threw away the phone somewhere. Nobody comes to see me. I was just reading and trying to figure out what this internet thing is all about. The only person who came in to that enclave is Ayo Odusholu. And I remember those early days when we would put a web address around uh, 8, 9 in the morning and we'll be waiting till, <laughs> till about 6 p.m. for the page to load us. <laughs> so so that that was where we are coming from. So on this uh, reunion thing, I just say, okay, Ayo, you just got to be here. And I'm so glad that you are here. Mm -hmm. Well, 